Hi, my name is Theo Bennett. I'm one of the few people who has actually scored a perfect score on the MCAT, a 528. And today I'm going to be walking you through some of the tips and strategies that I used to score a perfect score in the psychology and sociology section of the MCAT. Now, just to start off, I think there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to how to test take for the MCAT. Uh, a lot of the logic that we use and have used for other standardized tests, such as the ACT and SAT, don't really apply to the MCAT in the same way. And also the test is a lot different than your typical midterm or final when it comes to undergrad classes. And so a lot of the hard work when it comes to studying for the MCAT is retraining our brain to think in new ways and to think more like the AMC wants you to think. So that being said, let's dive right in. The first thing to know about the psychology and sociology section, especially if you haven't really studied a lot for the MCAT so far, is that the psychology and sociology section is by far the most straightforward section. A lot of it comes down to simply memorizing a ton of vocab words that pertain to both psychology and sociology, and then just regurgitating and recognizing these definitions when they show up on the exam. So the best piece of advice that I can give you is know every single vocab term. But you might be saying, okay, Bio, that doesn't really help me. What vocab terms do I actually need to know? And that's a great question, honestly. That was a source of a lot of confusion for me and a lot of stress. Uh, I initially did not score very high on the psychology and sociology section, and I was constantly missing questions because new terms were popping up that I thought I didn't need to know or I'd then never even seen before. And so it was hard to know what was just thrown in as a distraction and what was actually a term that I needed to know. So the best piece of advice that I can give you in terms of knowing these terms is to first go through all of the Khan Academy videos. The AMC actually paid Khan Academy to make the official gold standard prep videos for all of the MCAT. And so everything that's covered on the MCAT is gonna be contained within those videos. Now, a lot of people don't actually have the time to comb through the dozens, if not hundreds of hours of Khan Academy material. And so they'll use other resources that kind of condense this information down. One option is the 300 or 100 page documents that you can find online. At MCAT Self Prep, we actually pride ourselves on having one of the best resources when it comes to the psychology and sociology terms. We've provided very, very detailed notes, um, and those are available for free for anyone. So go over to mcatselfprep.com and check that out. The, the best way that you can make sure that you've covered all of your bases is to go to the AAMC website, where they have an outline of every single term that you're expected to know for the exam. Uh, this applies to the psychology sociology section, as well as to all the other science sections. And so if you can run through that and you recognize and feel comfortable with all the terms when it comes to the psychology and sociology sections, you should be good to go. And then the last way to really know that you've mastered all of the vocab is the AMC material itself. This is the best, most representative way of understanding what's gonna be on the MCAT. And so what I tried to do is basically memorize and have a good understanding of every single term that came up on an AMC official practice question both on the practice tests and on the question banks. Even if that answer choice wasn't the right answer, if that, I had never seen that term before, I still went, took the time to Google and through my own research and maybe going back to videos or books, try and come to a good understanding of every single term that I saw. Again, this doesn't even have to be the correct answer. If it's there, treat it as fair game. What I didn't do is I didn't memorize every single term that showed up on a third party exam. Because again, they're gonna try and get a sense of what's gonna be covered on the MCAT, but they're not working with the official material. And so it's hard to really trust them at face value. And the reason I didn't bother with it is because there's actually a unique testing question and testing principle that's present on the psychology and sociology section that's not present on any other section. And that is that they use these kind of distractive, tricky answer choices that you're not expected to know as a way to kind of make it more difficult. And what I mean by this is these trick questions will have three answer choices that you do know, that you are expected to know, and that you've seen before. And then they're gonna have a fourth option that you've never seen before. It's gonna sound nice, or it might not even sound nice at all, uh, but it's just there as a new term that you've never seen. So what I do in this case is I basically treat it like there's only three answers. And so I just choose the best answer using process of elimination and other testing strategies that we've discussed on this channel uh, to narrow it down to the best answer choice. So out of those three that I am familiar with, I'm going to pick one, right? 
So now I'm left with my best guess answer and this answer that I've never really seen before that's kind of weird. It might be right, I'm not sure. So in this situation, normally what you would do is you would use process of elimination to decide which of these is the better answer and then you would pick it. But what I want you to do instead is again, base 100% of your answer off of how you feel about this answer choice that you do know, that you have been expected to uh, be familiar with and that is your best guess so far. So what I mean by that is not necessarily picking this answer, but basing your answer choice off of how you feel about this answer. So if you feel more than 50% confident that this is the right answer, pick it. If you feel more than 50% confident that it's the wrong answer, pick this answer choice that you've never seen before. And so I know this is kind of can sound a little bit complicated, but basically in this final 50-50, right, I would say 90% of the time, the right answer is gonna be the best answer choice that you're familiar with. Only 10% of the time where you, will you be expected to eliminate these three answer choices and pick this answer that you've never seen before. But it does happen, and so if you're in this position, what I want you to do is basically base your answer choice off of how you feel about this answer choice that you are familiar with and ignore how you feel about this answer choice. The second piece of advice that I can really give when it comes to the specific test taking strategies of the psychology and sociology exam is don't underestimate the experimental design. What I mean by this is a large percentage of the questions from the psychology and sociology section are actually gonna come from experimental design questions. These are gonna be questions that where you're asked to evaluate the researcher's design and how things could be improved or potential flaws in their research design, uh, what type of uh, research study they did, whether it was longitudinal or case control or randomized control trial. There's lots of different options. And so I would spend a good afternoon maybe uh, in the last week or two of leading up to your exam to re-go over um, all those principles because they're very, very high yield. The third thing that I would uh, advise you to do for the psychology and sociology section is to finish strong. A lot of people finish with extra time and some people can even finish with 20 or even 30 minutes of extra time when it comes to the psychology and sociology exam. And so if you're finishing with 30 minutes extra time, what this is telling me is you're going too fast. I want you to read slowly. I want you to reread sections, even reread it three times if you didn't fully understand it and just take the max amount of time that you need. It should almost be painful if you're finishing this quickly, uh, but I want you to finish with about 15 minutes left. And then in this last 15 minutes, you're gonna be very tempted, especially on test day, to just finish, to just click end, click submit exam, and then walk out the door because then you're gonna finally be done, right? But in your practice tests, I want you to practice finishing strong. I want you to use all of that time. And so you can use that time in one of two ways, right? You could go back and review all the questions that you flagged, or you could do something else that I would actually potentially recommend more. What I did is, instead of reviewing my flagged answers, I decided to go through every single answer and check it again. The reason why I didn't go back and review just my flagged answers is because I found out through tracking my own statistics and figuring out um, when I was changing my answers that I was just terrible at picking the questions that I was flagging. Basically, my percentages lined up that the questions that I flagged were almost like I just threw a random dart at a board uh, and it had this, the, the same percentage of questions that I was missing uh, were both in the flagged and the unflagged questions. So I was just really bad at predicting what questions I was gonna miss. So instead of doing that, what I did is I went back and I just went through and reviewed every single question. And instead of redoing the questions, all I would do is I would reread the question and reread the answer choice that I picked just to make sure that I didn't misread the question or misread the answer choice. I only allowed myself to change my answer if I had an aha moment, which basically meant that if I had a moment where I said, oh, dang it, I totally misread that question, or oh, dang, I totally misread that answer choice. I, I missed a word there, or I, I misread what that question was saying. I totally skipped over that whole paragraph, or I missed this really specific part uh, of this question. So using the strategy, I was able to get through 15, 20 questions that I, in that same amount of time than if I were to just review one or two flagged questions. 
So I hope this helps. And if I could give you any piece of advice to get a perfect score on the psychology and sociology section like me, it would be know all the vocab, especially the official vocab, be aware of tricky questions and know how to answer them. And again, these tricky questions are questions where an answer choice you're not expected to have known before. Uh, to also not underestimate the experimental design questions and to finish strong. So thanks again for watching and feel free to like and subscribe. We're going to be posting a lot more of these videos here at MCAT Self Prep uh, and go, go ahead and check out our website uh, if you haven't already uh, because we're posting lots of content uh, to help you on your MCAT journey and we're doing it all for free. So thanks again.